Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well, and in this video I'm going to explain how progress bars work in JavaFX, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay then, progress bars. Progress bars are found underneath the controls drop down menu, so let's drag and drop one. You can increase the width as well as the height of this progress bar to suit your needs. That's not too bad. Now if you go underneath the properties menu, the first property is progress. This is a double value between 0 and 1. If you move the slider, you can fill your progress bar with progress. So remember that this is between 0 and 1. 0 would be 0%, 1 would be 100%. There's also an indeterminate mode where your progress bar has infinite potential, basically until you tell it to stop. But in this video, we'll be focusing on filling our progress bar with progress. So let's say that this will be 50 to begin with. And later on, I'll show you how we can change the color of the progress, the meter within our progress bar. Now, if we were to head to layout, we can change this horizontal progress bar to a vertical progress bar by rotating our progress bar a certain amount of degrees. So if we rotate our progress bar by 90 degrees, we now have a vertical progress bar. Or we could do 180, 270, or you can spin this thingamabob around to make it spin and be at a weird angle if you really want for some reason but I'll just keep it at zero for now. Then lastly, let's head to our code section and give this progress bar a unique ID like my progress bar. Now remember that there's no on action section, so we'll have to do some coding manually. Now to increase the progress, let's say that we'll have a button. Whenever we click on the button, we'll add progress to this progress bar. So let's find a button, drag and drop it, and give this button a unique ID. Let's say my button which we'll call a method named, how about increase progress. Let's create a label too, that will reflect the percentage that our progress bar is filled. So label is here. Let me increase the font size. And then center it. And we should give this label a unique ID, let's say my label. Let's make sure that our controller class is linked and then head to our controller class. Now save your fxml file, head to your controller class, and we will implement the initializable interface, then add any unimplemented methods. We need to declare this initialize method, and we will inject our fxml at fxml private progress bar my progress bar and we need our button at fxml private button my button at fxml private label my label. We'll also create a double value named progress to store our current progress. Now, in order for this program to run, we need to declare the increase progress method. So let's take care of that. After the initialize method, let's declare increase progress, public void increase progress, and there are no parameters. So this should be able to run now, but it's not going to do anything. Okay, now let's change the meter of our progress bar. Let's say that this is a video game and we would like a red progress bar to represent HP, or maybe green for stamina. So we're going to use a CSS property. So let's type my progress bar dot set style. And this method will accept a string argument, a string representation of a CSS property. So let's say we would like a red progress bar. We would type dash FX dash accent colon space, and then a color name or hex value then semicolon. So we should have a red progress bar now. Cool. Now you can pick a hex value too. So if we want green, that would be hashtag 00FF00, but you can really pick any color that you want. Then be sure to include that semicolon at the end. And we should have a green progress bar. Maybe this is stamina or something. So at this point, we don't really need our progress bar to start at 50. I'm going to change that to zero. So let's head to our progress bar and I'm just going to set this from 0 0.5 to zero so that when we run this, it should be at 
Now at this point, when we click on our button, it's going to call this increase progress method. So let's increase the progress of our progress bar, progress, and remember that this is a double value. And every time I call this method here, let's increase our progress by let's say 0.1. So that would be 10%. Then we need to set our progress type my progress bar dot set progress and pass in a double value. So we can just pass in progress. So every time I click this button, we will increase our progress. Now let's change the text of our label to reflect what percent of our progress bar is filled. So we're going to add this line of code, my label dot set text. And this will accept a string. Let's say double dot to string and pass in progress. And let's multiply progress by 100 so we can convert 0.1 to 10% then. So let's add plus percent. There's still a little bit more that we have to do, but let's take it step by step. Now, whenever I click this button, we will add 10% to our progress bar. However, since we're working with double values, after a given amount of calculations, there is some loss of precision. So I'm thinking that we should convert our double value to an integer. So let's take progress times 100 and first round it. Math dot round and then surround progress times 100. And we will cast all of this as an int. Also, let's change double to integer. So then we're working with integers. Let's try it again. So we have 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now, since there's no limit on this, we can go above 100. So let's add a limit. We'll surround these three lines of code with an if statement. Now, this is not going to work as what we intend, but I'll explain why momentarily. So let's say if progress is less than one, then we will increase our progress. Okay, let's try it again. So we should be able to stop at 100, right? Wrong, we can go above 100%, so we can reach 110% and then stop. Here's the reason why. I'm going to system.out.println progress, and let's keep track of progress as we click on our button. So we have 10%, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and remember that there's some loss of precision after you do so many calculations involving doubles. So when we should be at 100%, our progress is technically at 0.999999999999%. So to remedy this, we can use a data type known as Big Decimal. Now what Big Decimal does is that it's a class that gives us complete control over rounding behavior. Let's change progress from a double to Big Decimal. And we're going to instantiate this. So we'll need to import big decimal from java.math and I'm going to say big decimal progress equals new big decimal. And within the constructor, we can pass in a format string. So we'll type string dot format and we can list a format specifier. Let's say we would like two decimal places instead of however many decimal places are here. So we would type within a format string percent dot to f. Then our arguments will be the initial value that our progress will begin with. So we'll say 0, 0.0. Now let's head to our increase progress method. There's a few things that we're going to change. So within this if statement, we're going to check to see if progress dot double value so we need a method to access the value stored within progress if progress dot double value is less than one. Now, an important note with big decimal is that their values are immutable. If we need to update the value within new decimal, we would have to reinstantiate it again. So I'm going to copy this line. We're not going to redeclare it though. And let's change progress plus equals 0 0.1 to progress equals new big decimal, change 0.0 to progress dot double value method plus 
however much we want to increase our progress by. So 0 0.1, like what we did before. And then we will print progress dot double value in order to access it within my progress bar dot set progress, progress dot double value, as well as my label dot set text, progress dot double value. Technically, we don't need to round it anymore, I believe, but we'll just keep it in because I don't feel like changing it. Okay, so we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1.0, and we cannot go above 100%, 1.0. All right, everybody, so those are progress bars. If you would like a copy of all this code, I will post all of this to the comments section down below. But yeah, those are how progress bars work in JavaFX.